guys, Karen Wynn here from Inspired Art Wine down in Costa Mesa. So excited to teach you guys today. It's called the Midnight Reflection. It's a completely new painting. We haven't even introduced it to Inspired, so you're getting a sneak peek. Um, this painting that you see right here, this is only gonna be 20 minutes. I'm gonna give you a, a bite-sized version, but you will get the finished piece. What I'm holding right here is an 11 by 14 canvas. Um, if you want, you can also paint a bigger one. It would be a 16 by 20, but for the purpose of today, we're gonna use this size. Same di um, dimension, proportionality, and everything, okay? So what are we dealing with today? We're actually going to use only three tools today. So you're using a medium-sized brush. If you don't have this exact brush that I have, it's completely okay. Um, as long as the bristles and everything is about this size, it's, it's completely fine. And then we're going to use a small brush. This small brush will serve as the details and also like a pen or pencil for us. And then you see here is an index card. This index card is used as our little ruler that we're going to mark. If you don't have an index card, that's completely okay. Just go ahead and take out a piece of paper, cardstock, anything that's a little bit uh, thick and cut it out. All right, so we're gonna dive right in. Now, make sure also that you have a cup of water on the side just to rinse the paint out. And then also finally, get having some pieces of napkin is important, right? Because we might make a mess. With that, and finally, don't forget, you need to make sure you have some paint. Uh, the main colors that we're using is going to be white, blue, green, uh, yellow and obviously the black. The red here is if you, uh, you don't see a lot of red on here, but if you want to jazz up your painting, add a little bit of red, be my guess, but we won't be using a lot of the red. I always like to fill up my, my palette with all the different colors in case where my mood changes and I want to jazz things up. I have the colors in front of me versus having to go search for the paint. So with that, let's go ahead and, and do this. What I want you guys to do is take out your smallest brush, right? And then we are going to, um, if you're dealing with 11 by 14, you could do a freehand and just draw the horizontal line. If you want you know, more guidance, go ahead and take out that index card, but you're gonna use your small brush. You're gonna dip it into green, like so. And then what we're gonna do here, remember we're working with the 11 by 14 canvas, okay? You're gonna take out your index card at the end right so, and then we're gonna do a little marker right over here. And then we're gonna do a little Another marker right over here. Uh, some of you, if you don't have an easel to work with, you can always paint it flat, right? Um, with this, if you're dealing with a smaller canvas, it's not necessary to have to use an easel, right? Um, if you want to use an easel, you can. So now what we're going to do is we're going to line this up. Don't worry about getting the lines to be completely perfect. This is just so we can set where the background is against the foreground. The foreground in this case is, you know, going to be the, the, the lake of the reflection right here that you see. So now that we have that, this is done. What I want you to do now is we are going to take out our medium brush, like so. Uh, the medium brush is going to be mixing the different colors, okay? Make sure that you have an extra plate on hand, like so. And then we are going to mix our teal color. So you're gonna take one scoop a blue, take one scoop of green, mix that together here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two scoops of white. Mix that all in so you get this nice, vibrant, green tush, emerald green color. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold our brush. Uh, I would always advise people to hold uh, your brush right in the center right here. So it gives you that nice uh, medium grip going to do a little marker right here and you're going to do a few markings one two three four five six right um this technique and the uh, that we typically do at the studio that people really enjoy is called dry brushing which i'll show you guys dry brushing you're going to do put that color in there and then you're going to take a piece of napkin you're going to dab out any paint that you have and you're going to hold your brush to the side from right to left and you're going to almost like you're scrubbing it like you're scrubbing it see how i'm scrubbing it like so really fast there you go you're going to scrub it 
it's almost like you're scrubbing, if you're, if you're done scrubbing the floor, this is uh, similar to that, it's like scrubbing this, like so. Uh, make sure that if you wanna prioritize where you wanna um, put your colors, is that you focus more above here. This at the bottom, I would say, will get camouflaged later by um, the trees, right? So we have this. Then after you're done with this, you're gonna dip your brush again into white, I would say like a half a scoop, and you're going to then use the scrubbing technique again, right around here. You'll notice that the white will then blend with the jade green color, and that's gonna give you that nice uh, dimension of different colors. Uh, don't be shy about having the colors uh, touch each other. We actually want that to happen because if they touch each other, it's going to give you that nice sky that will blend together really nicely. While you're doing this, um, you can always take a step back, and take a look at your painting and see how that looks, especially when it comes to sky and we're working with the background. Um, we wanna make sure that we get a different perspective from afar as well. So you notice on here, this part right here, it's a bit more light. So you just continue to dip your brush into white and keep blending it out. See that? Uh, if you happen to be, um, if you find that your sky is getting a little bit too light, all you have to do is dip your brush into that teal, light teal color that you mix, and you start adding a different, another layer, two layers of it, over like so. Remember each time that you're doing this, that you're holding your brush in the middle, and you are scrubbing from the right to the left. Some of you who like to, you know, possibly hang this painting up in your office, in the kitchen, or the bathroom, um, people who come to the studio, what we like to encourage them to do is paint the sides right over here, paint the four sides. Um, you leave the bottom side last to paint because what happens is that if you paint everything then you put the paint right on the easel, it'll get wet. Now, if you're painting flat, you can all, you paint all four sides. Um, this way, when you hang it up on the wall, you don't have to put a frame. Okay. When we're dealing with acrylic paint, I would say it takes about 10 minutes to dry. Um, if it's during the summer, it might be quicker, maybe eight minutes. If it's the winter, it might take up to 15 minutes to dry. So uh, at this point, this, uh, this painting right here, I would say it's about 30% dry. We don't wanna get too thick with it, right? Because dry brushing means just that, dry brushing, not too much paint on it. So there you go. Um, if you have the desire to add more depth to your sky, you can definitely do that, but I don't, I don't really I don't want to encourage you to add too much paint on it right now because it's still relatively wet. So right now we're, we are happy with this. We're going to leave it the way it is. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to work on our foreground. Now the good news is that the foreground and the sky have similar hue of colors. So because of that, we don't have to mix too many colors. We did that earlier. The only difference is that this part right here to the left side has a little bit of more shadow and um, I'll show you how to do that. Now that you have that, you're gonna take your piece of napkin, you're gonna squeeze it, scrunch it out so that you have more of a sharp edge like so. And dip your brush slightly into the water to moisten it. Uh, we need that because our next technique is we're blending it from horizontal motion. And if your brush is too dry and you put that into the paint, it's not going to give you that reflection color as you see right here in the finished piece. So dip your medium brush or this brush right here into a little bit of the water and then add a little bit of teal. You're gonna move in this motion horizontally. Now we're gonna keep building colors on top of color. So notice that as I'm going through this, I'm not blending it completely in that same motion. I'm, I'm having some parts right here empty, if you will. And where I have the parts that has the white real estate, you see that? I'm going to start adding white. So back and forth. So to repeat, you're gonna start with the teal. You're gonna move into horizontal motion, leaving some parts blank 
or white if you will. And where you have the white, you're going to dip your brush into the white portions. And you see right now, we have a little bit of the shadow, the reflection. And then we are going to dip our brush into blue, add that into that teal so we get a darker hue. And then where you have the white, what you wanna do is, this is your opportunity to start building colors on top of colors, okay? And then up here, just wanna blend this out a little bit, add, dip your brush slightly into black. And this portion right here, you're doing just one stroke, like so. And on the side here. We're doing that because if you do all the colors the same, there's a really hard differentiation front between the sky and the lake. So we gotta make sure that we add some level of darker color at the bottom here, so you can tell which is the top and bottom. Okay. All right. As we're waiting for this part to, to relatively dry, what, what we're gonna do now is we're going to work on the moon. The moon is right over here. The moon, um, I'll show you, it's, a, it's actually quite simple if you really break it down. It's really just like a C. So let's go ahead and clean out our brush. We gotta make sure that we clean out the best as we can because we're going straight to white and any colors that you have that's stuck in the brush is going to tamper with it. So swish it five times. One, two, three, four, five. Tap it a few times. Take out your piece of napkin and you're going to dab out any remnants of paint that you have. Here's a little trick. In case you're curious to know if you have still paint in your brush, you just take out your fingers and, you know, dab it out and if you see paint that's still on there, that means it's not fully, you still have some paint in there. So I don't have any more paint in my fingers as I'm touching this brush and squeezing it out. So I'm happy with that. Now we're gonna dip the brush into white, the C. So find the corner where you want to have the moon, okay? You don't wanna do it close to here because that's where your uh, trees are going to be. So I would say right in the corner right here and then you're gonna draw a C. We all know how to do a C, right? So we draw a C, like so. Now after we draw the C, you're going to grab a piece of napkin like so here, and we're going to, same technique we had earlier with a dry brush, and you're gonna scrub it in. Um, you're not going to, you're going to scrub it in where you get like the shadow of the shape. Notice I'm doing that, see that? And then you keep building this portion right here, the white on top of it. Um, making sure that you have almost like a clouds, if you will. You don't want to cover the whole entire sea with white, because if you do that, it's not going to look like there's fogs, right? So once you have the white, you can rotate your brush and add a little bit more of that teal color that we were using and keep building on top of it by adding white and teal. Right around this corner right here, now that the sky has semi-dried already, you're gonna build another second layer of teal in there. If you haven't painted the corners yet, make sure to do that if you wanna hang it up, right? See, now we are pretty much, uh, I would say, 50% done with the painting. Can you believe it? 50% done with the painting. Now go ahead and retire this, meaning retire just simply means putting the brush into the water, okay? So now I'm gonna show you guys how to do the trees. Now it's really repetitive, it's the same thing, okay? So what we're gonna do first is we're going to do create our grays. We'll do uh, trees behind here, then we're gonna build more colors on top of colors. So what I want you guys to do is take out your brush again and we're gonna create gray. So we're gonna take two scoops of white. You're gonna take half of a scoop of black, not that much, mix it in. So you get that nice gray color. Okay, see that nice gray color right there? It looks almost like silver, if you will. And go ahead and put your medium brush or this brush that you're using into the water. We're not going to use it for a while. And then we're gonna go ahead and take out that small brush. 
right there. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and draw lines. One, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna draw vertical lines. One, two. You can actually use, let's go ahead and use black so you can see, right? One, two, and we wanna make it, um, when you're drawing the vertical line, it doesn't have to be in the same length. You actually want to rotate between long and short, like I have right here, to resemble realistically what a tree would look like. So you see here I have one, two, three, four, five. So go ahead and draw five lines for me right there. If you find that your canvas is uh, relatively still wet, make sure that it's about 75% dry because if it's still wet, it will be very difficult for you to draw the tree. Um, it will get a little muggy and not, not too nice. Okay. So once you do that, we're gonna go ahead and put our small brush into the water. Okay, um, one thing I wanna point out when it comes to something like this is these lines that you see here where we get the effect of the tree, it's really taking the teeth of the brush. So um, if you have a used brush, that would actually work in your favor versus a completely new one. When I say the teeth, I'm talking about, see right here? If you have a completely new brush and you don't have the teeth yet, the, the best shortcut to do is actually almost like you're doing the stamping technique. So when you do the stamping technique, that will that will work out the bristles, exercise the bristles. So when you actually put your paint on it, it's gonna give you this effect right over here. Okay, so now what we wanna do, you're gonna dip your small brush into black and you're just going to draw lines back and forth. Make sure when you get to the base, you're doing it um, wider and then you work as you work your way up it's going to be smaller so it's going to look almost like a triangle if you will so you're going to start off at the bottom long and then you're going to move your way up and make it shorter so it looks like the shape of a triangle okay uh, don't worry about making the lines completely perfect in fact, if you make it one short, one long, um, it's going to help you to have that effect of a natural tree. Uh, at the bottom, top right here, I would encourage you guys not to draw another line, just leave the tip like so. So back and forth. Okay, do that again, repeat. You know, what I love about this painting is that when you first look at it, you're like, wow, this looks a little more complex, but really, um, really it's it's not because if you break it down into different elements it's what, what do we do we mix the colors then we did the dry brushing we use that same color did the reflection now we did the tree we drew the vertical lines and go back and forth back and forth to look almost like a triangle now that you've done that remember that gray that we had just created and we have the teeth I want you to dip your brush into the gray you're gonna do this you're just going to dab it out And you're just going to dab the bristles back and forth. You're not blending anything. You're pretty much doing a little strokey stroke, like so. It really helps if you have a used brush because the, the teeth of the bristles will give the effect of the tree. If you want something a little bit uh, color to be darker, simply just dip your brush into black and then into the gray. And all I'm doing is stroking down like so. and I just repeat for the trees. Now, how we're getting this 3D look is that we're starting off with the gray, and then um, once the gray clears out, we start adding the black. So you wanna have different colors in your hues to really add um, you know, another dimension to that. So we're done with this set. The next set we're gonna do is we're gonna do uh, green, and this color green, while you're doing this, make sure that you do the reflection of that. So I will show you this. Got to make sure that you rotate this as a reflection. It is called midnight reflection for a reason, right? So you're going to repeat do the same thing, the bottom right here, but it doesn't have to be completely detailed. So you mirror this effect where you have this. And you're going to do the opposite end. You do this back and forth.
The mirror uh, one doesn't have to be completely perfect because really the focal point is the top portion right here, right? So back and swish, 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 swish. Make sure the tip, the tip that you um, don't line it up, you leave it the way it is so it gives you that nice thin silhouette right there. Same thing that you did here, make sure that you have the teeth. Dip your brush into black, into the gray, and then dab it a few times, not too much. If you find that your brush is still a little wet, make sure that it's dry as much as it can be. Dab it a few times, just to give that color. It's a little more challenging, you'll notice, as you do the bottom because it's like painting backwards, right? Um, so do the best as you can. Now, let that dry. What you're going to do now is you're going to clean out your brush and we're going to mix the minty green. So the minty green is, you're going to take one scoop of blue, big scoop, like you're scooping guacamole, you're gonna do a big scoop of green, okay? And then what you're gonna do now is you're going to add two scoops of the white. Okay, and then you're gonna do one scoop of yellow. So you get this color, okay? So two scoops of blue. One scoop of green, one scoop of white, and one scoop of yellow. Yeah, it's a lot of scoops, right? Yep. All right, so we are going to do one, two, three, a few of these, about three. And you're going to dip your brush again. You're gonna dip your brush into black, and we're gonna color this right here. Draw a little line, another line right there. What you're doing is you're focusing on the gaps. See that? And same technique that you did earlier, you're gonna go back and forth, not putting too much thought into it, guys. Not too much thought, okay? And then do the same thing right here. We, we don't have to add too much green on this side, okay? Because that's going to be more for black. And then make sure that you don't forget your reflection. At this point, hopefully you all are comfortable with the reflection part. Um, the reflection good news is that it's not going to be so much of a focal point. Remember when using black the whole time? There you go. Add one more here. So now we are going to dip our brush this one right here, clean it out. And the green that you had just created, you're doing the same exact technique. So you can see here, it's fairly simple. Once you are comfortable with it, you're going to then get the teeth. And you're gonna cover this portion here, back and forth, just a few strokes, like so, with the green. If you find that the, the black that you had just created starts to bleed through with the green, that's completely okay. You know, when it comes to this painting, it's really the interpretation of it, right? So if you're painting, you're looking at it close and you're trying to get it to be perfect, don't worry about it um, from afar because the colors are so vibrant that it really transcends any, um, you know, the stroke having to be completely perfect. So I'm gonna do this. All right, now the next step really is doing the same thing, right guys? We are doing the black. The black where you have the gap right here, we're gonna draw another line. And we do one more line right over here. And then I'm gonna draw one more tree like so. And same thing like we did earlier, we're gonna do the reflection points, all right? We'll draw one more black right here. And then after that, we're drawing our, the bottom base, like I mentioned earlier, it needs to be longer. So we work our way up, make sure you leave this tip right here by itself. 
The same thing at the bottom. is really coming together because uh, painting, it's like a cooking, right? So if you guys like cooking, you'll understand this analogy I'm saying is that we're putting different ingredients together, right? And at first, those ingredients, once it's not in a dish, it probably doesn't make sense. But when things are put together and the dish comes out, you're like, wow, this tastes so good. So you're painting when everything, all the elements are together, you're like, wow, my painting is, is I'm proud of my painting. So you are about 80% done with it, the painting. So now that you have this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get the teeth again. Grab this out, the teeth. And you are going to dab it a few times with black. With black, you gotta be a little more careful with this because black is such a potent color that you wanna go um, a little conservative with the amount of paint that you're using because too much of it will hide the shape of the tree. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the bristles and I'm just dabbing a little bit of the white here, uh, the black here, back and forth, back and forth, like so. Continue to do the rest here like so. This is a this is the part where you actually want to um, focus up, take your time, don't rush it, right? Dab it a few times. If you were working with a larger canvas, the same principle applies, right? In terms of the color mixing, um, with the, the proportionality, but the only exception is that you have to add a little bit more of each. So an example would be if I mentioned, use two scoops of white, if you're using a larger canvas, you'll do four scoops of white. Um, so but the same as far as proportionality is, is, doesn't change. So once you're done with this, what you wanna do now is you wanna start adding elements where things are, you feel like things are a little bit missing. So in my case, right over here, what I wanna do is I wanna add another green tree. So I'll do that. Add a little bit of the green tree here so it looks full. The last thing you want to do now is take out your smallest brush. You're going to wash it the best as you can. And you see where we have this horizontal line of white. You're going to dip your brush into white and you're just going to retrace it, if you will. Not having to be perfect, but just parts of it. So you set the horizon right here. This way you know where the tree is and where the reflection starts. Notice that I'm not having the, the white line to be completely perfect. Some areas has more texture than the other, and that is actually intentional. So then that gives you a bit more naturalness on it. Now the final step here is to finesse your reflection points. And how I do that is I clean out my brush. These at this point, your painting is about 95% done. All you're doing is improving everything. As far as like the shadow, I'm gonna add a little bit here. And 
then there's some elements right here where I want to add a bit more reflection by dipping my brush into white and then I'm going to blend it out a little bit further. Now, if you guys are interested in our other classes, we also offer a wide array of virtual classes that you um, can take a look at on our website, inspiredartwine.com. Um, if you find that you're having trouble purchasing uh, supplies, we also um, sell supplies as well too. So we do paint kits. We can ship it to you or drop it off, or you can pick it up at the studio. Uh, but definitely take a look at our website. We have a lot of paintings. This is more like a preview for you, so you can see. But hopefully, uh, I hope you guys have learned a few tricks here about dry brushing, color mixing. But pretty much, this is your bite-sized midnight reflection. See you guys.